This is Bazaar Morning Call. Broadcasting live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studios in Mumbai. Hello and welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. We are coming to you live from the CNBC TV 18 Motilal Oswal Studio. I'm Nigel D'Souza and joining me today is Surbi as well as Rima. Good morning ladies. Well, the final day of the fiscal, it's been a good one for us. But the sense we get is towards the end of uh, the fiscal, we lost a little bit of uh, steam, but we'll take it nonetheless. Oh, absolutely. Uh, yesterday, the mid-cap index ended absolutely flat. It was doing well in the morning. So that's where some of the momentum, and also in the last two months, so much of the froth, you yeah. know, in the mid and the small cap, uh, you know, stocks has been taken out. So I guess we start, you know, FI25 on a more, you know, stronger footing. You know, first of all, I can say uh, today, thank God it's Thursday. I, I knew you were going for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's also a, a very interesting aspect. If, if you look at the last 12 months, this is exactly where that rally started. Mm -hmm. Because we were sulking by the time, same time last year when the, the previous fiscal was ending. We had all the budget woes. We had the debt taxation for mutual funds. That came and kind of, you know, hit the market a little bit. After that, the rally, the dream run took off. So let's start by keeping things in context. Yes, broader market correction. Yes, uh, small cap, mid cap cool off. But what do the numbers ultimately look like? They look fantastic for the year gone by. Fiscal year, FY24 has been good for equities. 30% if you're in the frontline large cap index. 62, 63% if you're talking about the mid cap index as a barometer. And the wider, broader market, 75% of a surge on the small cap index. That's what we're talking about. So yes, towards the end, a little bit of a cool off and a bit of a shakeout, which always uh, makes the market healthier as all wise men tell us. So that's the year in perspective. We're just coming back to the here and now. What we saw yesterday was year-end adjustments at play and that really showed up in the numbers as well. And that's what we were talking about and that's what we were discussing. NAV management, some of the year-end allocations coming in. The FII picture looked good. Obviously, we have to keep in mind that all this data is skewed by all these huge blocks that are happening, CDSL, Aster, etc. But nonetheless, the, the color of money is still green. So it's about 1,200 crores from the DIIs and over 2,100 crores from the FIIs. What do the global markets tell us? Well, the momentum was back on the US as well, uh, on Wall Street as well. And perhaps it was, uh, again, year-end allocations playing out quarter-end, not really year-end for the US, but at least quarter-end allocations playing out. So you had a nice rally going across most of the indices, S&P 500 at fresh all-time highs. NASDAQ put on about half a percent. Dow rallied over 450 points. It looked good over there. And by the way, bond yields, they dipped a little bit, a couple of basis points, both the 10-year as well as the US two-year. In fact, at one point in time, intraday, the US 10-year slipped below the 4.2% mark. Uh, that's uh, how sort of things have been playing out. Now, back home, uh, we have now moved to the top end of the recent trading range. By recent, I mean the last fortnight, the last two odd weeks or so. Middle of March is where the Nifty was around at this level of 22,200. If this level gets taken out today, then there could be fresh impetus and fresh flows perhaps coming in. Though yesterday was, there was a, you know, ample call writing even at the 22,200 mark. So let's watch for this. The 20 DMA is going to be in play immediately because it comes uh, right in at around 22,158, 160 thereabouts. Now, the index is practically, you know, 1.5%, 1.8% away from the all-time highs. Let's see if the bulls will try and make that last sort of hurrah, last attempt at closing in with that, you know, uh, gap of the all-time high. And there are uh, index changes at play as well. We have Sriram Finance coming into the Nifty today, UPL moving out, more changes in the Nifty next 50. Geo Financial Services gets added in over there. Uh, so plenty to keep us excited, but uh, last day of what's been a spectacular year. Oh, absolutely. And just to put the cues on board, today is the March series expiry. The Nifty rejig also takes place where Sriram Finance is in, UPL is out, and also the optional T plus zero settlement for 25 stocks. It's a pilot right now. You know, Sebi will see how this plays out. It's optional, it's voluntary, but that is also effective from today. Tomorrow, global markets, including us, shut for, uh, you know, Good Friday. But investors will look ahead to fresh economic data coming out of the United States. The personal income, consumer spending, and the personal consumption expenditures will be out tomorrow. And next week, next week, we've got the April sales data for the month of, uh, for the auto sector. And also the RBI MPC, that's from 3rd to the 5th. It will be the first MPC 
of uh, 20 F5, 25. Just to take stock of the quarter gone by, well, it was a lot about the oil and gas PSU stocks. So the Nifty was just up, you know, 1.8% in the quarter, Jan to March period, but the oil and gas sector was up 20%, largely led by the PSUs there. The Nifty CPSC index also up 17%. Realty did well and auto did well. Where did the momentum flag off when you look at the sectors? Well, it was FMCG, the Nifty Bank, and IT. Um, in fact, all these three indices ended in the red for the quarter gone by. And taking stock of the full year, as to be pointed out, the Nifty did 30%, uh, the mid caps did 65%, small caps did 75%. But again, it's the PSUs, the CPSC, that's where the bulk of the rally took place this year. The CPSC index up 100%. And the underperformers, no sector ends in the red in FI24. Uh, but, you know, banks, FMCG and IT, these were the relative underperformers, but they still gave you gains of about, you know, 20 to 25 percent for the year gone by. Uh, well, that's right. You know, Rima, just a quick point uh, for this quarter, that's the final quarter, the U.S. markets, all the three yeah. indices are up between five and a half to around 10 percent. The Indian markets are up less than two percent. So towards the end of the fiscal, it appears the emerging markets like India, well, we're doing a relative underperformance. Maybe China as well had a factor to play out there. But let's run you through the key data points then. Uh, you know, in yesterday's trading session, finally, volumes picked up. Maybe it had an element of this entire NSE indices rejig that we're talking about. So yesterday, volumes did come back. In fact, the volumes were the highest since uh, March 15. So the volume number should come up. Yesterday was a relatively higher volume day. Moving to uh, the bounce that we've seen, since we're talking about mid-March, from mid-March, you know, from uh, March 13th, effectively, the small and the mid-cap index have actually got a big shakeout at that point of time. They've come back and they've come back in style. And now there are select names that are actually doing a big outperformance. So the dip that you got on select names, well, some of those stocks have seen a big, big recovery out there. So keep an eye on the broader markets. Don't throw in the towel with regard to the broader markets. Select your stocks and still you'll make a lot of money out there. So just keep that in mind. Moving to what the FIs did yesterday, well, they added close to around six shots for every one long position. That's the ratio up for you. And the short positioning is added on 69%. In absolute terms, the net short positions are again moving towards that 100,000 uh, contracts on. Remember when we saw it move to around that you know, 95,000, 90,000 on, then we saw a bit of a short covering bounce. Yet again, we're at around 90,000. Let's see how we end uh, this series. But from next week onwards, if you, you know, wake up and you say that, hey, the FIs are aggressively net short, that's normally a trigger where you see a bit of a bounce on the Nifty. On the options data, well, the 22,000 call, that saw a big unwinding yesterday because those call writers realized that maybe the markets are moving with too much of momentum. So they have shifted their writing to the 22,150, 22,200 call. On the downside as well, we did see a fair bit of writing as at three puts, all three strikes come up for you. The total writing that we saw in terms of addition was closer on 1.3, 1.4 crore shares. So there is writing out there, which brings us to the levels. The two goalposts we're looking at is the 20 as well as the 50 DMA. But the range you're looking at, the broader range, is around 20, 21,900 and 22,250. And now we're closer to the upper end of the range. On the Nifty Bank itself, well, again, the 20 and the 50 DMA, if, yesterday you saw a big recovery on the Nifty Bank, actually. But that could be a weekly expiry-related factor. So you want the Nifty Bank to get past that 47,000-odd uh, mark. If that's the case, well, then it starts moving towards a fresh all-time high. And that's what gives legs to the Nifty. Finally, the stock that I'm looking at is yesterday everyone was talking about the FMCG space being under some pressure. And that's why, yes, the index was lower. But one stock that did quite well was Goodrich Consumer. It ended high with a gain of close to around 3% odd. And it crossed a couple of crucial technical levels, which should come up for you on the screen. The 20 DMA, that's where it ended. And it crossed even the 50 DMA. So I'll keep an eye on this one. Maybe the street is sensing something. Technically, at least, it looked quite strong in yesterday's trade. So let's see how this goes. Uh, absolutely. Uh, indeed, we have uh, strong internals coming in from yesterday's trading action. Let's see if the bulls can build on that today or not. But it is time to move on and uh, get you some money market views. Parul Mittal Sinha of Standard Chartered Bank says the USD INR has moved higher in line with the stronger dollar. He says, uh, she says the market positioning is much lighter now after the sharp move on Friday. And she thinks that another such move is unlikely in the near term. She adds that positive USD INR fundamentals stay intact and thinks that it is likely to mimic the US dollar given life positioning. However, she adds USD, uh, the USD renminbi pair trading above 625 remains a concern and needs a close watch. She expects uh, the USD INR to trade in a range of 83.15 to 83.65 in the near term. On the bonds, Parul says bond yields inched higher last week due to greater SDL supply and the up move in the USD INR. 
She says SDL spreads, however, remain broadly unchanged on strong investor appetite. The RBI actively managed liquidity through VRRs in the backdrop of year-end advanced tax and GST outflows. She expects the 10-year benchmark bond deal to trade in a range of 7, 7 to 7.1 in the near term.